Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hillside Community Church's Christmas Eve service online. I'm so glad that you could join us. I just want to wish everyone out there a very Merry Christmas. I hope all of you are well, and I'm, I'm glad that you've tuned in this evening. It's really important for us to spend time with our family and, and our friends and to share gifts with one another, but I think Christmas wouldn't be Christmas unless we really focused in and took a look at the true meaning. And Christmas is really about one thing. It's about our Lord Jesus Christ and being thankful for the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that he brings. Would you bow with me in prayer this evening as we open tonight's service? Heavenly Father, thank you for Christmas. Thank you for giving us your Son. Thank you for the gift that we have in you. Lord, I pray that each person that's out there tonight, God, that they would be encouraged and strengthened in their, in their faith and that this would be just a really nice evening for them. And we turn our focus towards you, God, because you are our Father and you are the creator of all things, Lord Jesus. And Spirit, we're so thankful that you live inside of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. May you be honored. Amen. The Bible is God's Word. If we have to speak of a single purpose of the Bible, it would be to reveal God to us. There are many things that we could never know about God unless He told them to us, and the Bible is God's self-revelation to humanity. The Bible also tells us who we are as human beings, who we were created to be, and how we became entangled in sin. Ultimately, the Bible tells us of the love that our Creator has for humanity, showing us our need for a Savior and laying out God's master plan for our salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. When we reflect on Christmas and the Christmas story that happened that first night so many years ago, we recognize that what unfolded was actually foretold by messengers, the prophets, hundreds of years before it occurred. I'd like you to now join with Morgan and Courtney as we sing together that old Christmas hymn that came upon a midnight clear. Oh, 
700 years before the first Christmas Eve, the prophet Isaiah foretold the coming of a Savior into the world to rescue the world from its despair and its sin. Now in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, it is written, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. What an amazing prophecy. What's so amazing about this prophecy is that the ancient tribal lands of Zebulun and Naphtali, that was one, they, they were two of the lost tribes of Israel. That land was later called Galilee of the Gentiles. And Isaiah called it Galilee of the Gentiles far before it was ever being called that. I find this very amazing. What a prophecy. Galilee was actually formed under the Roman Empire hundreds of years after Isaiah made this prophecy. Further to this, Isaiah foretold of the ministry of the Messiah who had walked in these lands. In Isaiah chapter 9, 6, and 7, it is written, For unto us a child is born, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, His government and its peace will know no end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all of eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. The prophet Micah, who was a contemporary with Isaiah, he also foretold the Savior coming into the world. He said that the Savior would be born in the same town as his forefather, King David, Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one from me, one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Tonight, friends, in honor of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world, I would like to read for you the story of the first Christmas in the Bible in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, we are told, At the time, the Roman Empire Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their ancestral towns to register for the census. And it be, because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds, staying in the fields nearby, guarding their sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all of the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth 
to those with whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem. Let us see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all of these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Jesus was born in the most humble of circumstances, in a little obscure town in the middle of the countryside in a stable. And not only that, but he was actually laid in an animal's feed trough. God sent Jesus into these circumstances because his Messiah would be the Savior of all men. Not just privileged people, not just kings, not just nobles, but shepherds and carpenters and people uh, of all sorts. Even the lowliest of people in the lowest social order. Now, the King of Kings of all creation was born as a Savior for all mankind. And His throne is established in eternity. Would you join with us as we sing that old hymn, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the star It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and a soul. Christ was born. 
Eight days after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph took him to the Jewish temple to be circumcised and dedicated unto the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35, tells us what happened on this occasion. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout man and was eagerly waiting the Messiah to come to rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law of Moses required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, for you have done what you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Jesus' parents that night, or that day, I should say, were amazed at what was being said about him. You see, Simeon was given insight into the true identity of this child who was being dedicated. This was no ordinary human child. As Isaiah the prophet had said, this child who was born, this son who was given, was in fact the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. Jesus Christ was born to rule over governments, to be a wonderful counselor, to be mighty God, everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Jesus was given as a gift from God for all of the people. And we see in his life how he operated. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. The deaf were made to hear again. He did all these things to show the heart of God to all people. And then he died for our sins. Jesus was given as a gift for us. Colossians 1, 15-20 tells us that Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through Him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through Him and for Him. He existed before anything else. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God, in all of his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. And this is why the angels sang together before those shepherds in the Bethlehem fields. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth with whom God is well pleased. God's Christmas gift to us was his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, it is Christmas Eve. This evening, millions of Christians around the world will celebrate the birth of Jesus together. We celebrate the birth of Jesus because God, our Creator, by putting on humanity, became one of us to deal with our sinful, rebellious hearts. Jesus came to earth on that first Christmas day to make a way for us to know the Father. Christmas and Easter are very closely linked. Christmas is actually the promise of Easter, where Jesus sacrificed himself by dying in our place, conquering sin and death by rising from the dead. Jesus forgave people their sins. And if we allow him to take his rightful place in our spirit and ask him to be our savior, he forgives us and cleanses us so that the Holy Spirit can make his home inside of us. Jesus ascended into heaven and seated at the Father's right hand. 
establishing his kingdom in the hearts of the saints. And those saints are people who have accepted him as their sacrificial offering. Although our sins were as scarlet when we accept Jesus as our Savior, the scriptures say they are as white as snow. So, we are saints. Jesus ascended into heaven. His eternal kingdom has been put in our hearts through the Holy Spirit's dwelling. This Holy Spirit has been given to all true believers in Jesus Christ. He lives inside of each one of us and is the down payment for the saints, guaranteeing eternal life to come. Jesus came to earth that very first Christmas day to make us a way so that we would not perish but have everlasting life. Not only that, but He came to transform hearts here and now. If you want to be at peace with God, come to the Prince of Peace and accept His free gift of love and grace. This is the true gift and the true meaning of Christmas, that God gave His Son, the Lord Jesus, as a way to be reconciled unto Himself, as the truth that would set us free from the darkness that ensnares and the life that is given to everyone who believes in Him, both Jews and all the rest of us, the Gentiles. Abundance in living, full of meaning, which leads us to paths of peace. This is a Christmas gift that the world cannot give us. And once you have received it, the world cannot take it away. During the time leading up to Christmas Eve, we've been celebrating Advent. Over the past four weeks in our church, we've had online devotions focusing in on the hope, the peace, the joy, and the love that has been given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. And how these four things are like light that God has brought into our hearts. During this time, it's good for all of us to take some time to stop and reflect for a few minutes about what makes this day so special. These four candles represent the four weeks of Advent, each of them throwing light into our circumstances and into our life. This evening, being Christmas Eve, I would like to light the candle in the center of it all, the candle that is known as the Christ candle. It is white and it represents the purity and light that the Son of God brought into the world when he was born as a baby. God in the flesh came to us, Emmanuel. The Christ candle celebrates the moment of birth of the Messiah, the moment of transition from Old Testament prophecy to fulfillment. May the Lord, may He bless you. May He keep you. Make His face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, and give you His peace. I pray that all of you will have a very Merry Christmas as we sing in closing tonight. Joy to the world. Joy to the world.